SpaceX is working hard on post-flight repairs at the Starship launch site, ensuring readiness for the next big launch. Additionally, exciting news reveals new Starship and booster preparations for testing. And breaking news from NASA unveils SpaceX's plans for the upcoming Starship launch. Welcome to this week's episode, jam-packed with all the latest in space exploration. On the orbital launch mount, workers continued to fix the damages incurred during the November Starship launch. Teams recently swapped all 20 booster hold-down clamps on the launch mount. These clamps hold the booster on the launch mount and retract when all the Raptor engines of the vehicle reach their full power during liftoff. The clamps were damaged and were replaced after the April launch too. I think SpaceX needs to speed up the retraction procedure during the next launch to avoid the clamps being damaged. Repairs on the booster quick disconnect that allows the flow of propellants, gases, electric power, and communication signals to the first stage continue. Teams recently removed the back panel of the mechanism to access the pipes and connections within. Teams were also spotted inspecting the Starship Quick Disconnect, which sustained damage during Starship liftoff last month. The mechanism was tested on December 5 to verify its functionality. The damages don't seem to significantly impact the arm's range of motion. Workers might concentrate on ship quick disconnect repairs after they complete the work on the booster quick disconnect. It looks like the repairs on the launch tower arms have been completed. The Starship lifting and stacking arms, or chopsticks, were tested on Tuesday. The arms were raised to the top of the launch tower from its bottom resting position and held there for 10 minutes before being lowered to the base of the tower. The tank farm expansion works continue at the launch site. All five new horizontal tanks delivered to the launch site two weeks ago are now resting on the pedestals built for them. Three or four additional tanks will be delivered soon to complete the expansion. The eight horizontal methane storage tanks and the new tanks will eventually replace the vertical tanks at the tank farm. Since the tanks are horizontal, they will be much safer from debris thrown during rocket liftoff than vertical tanks. Moreover, the tanks will be protected by a strong wall separating the launch pad and the tank farm. Construction work is currently ongoing outside the tank farm, near Highway 4, most likely to lay the pipes needed to connect the pumps, heat exchangers, and other equipment from the oxygen side of the vertical tanks to the new horizontal tanks. At this pace, it looks like the horizontal tanks will be completely operational before the next Starship flight test. In the previous episode, we talked about the latest report from the Government Accountability Office that revealed that the Artemis III lunar landing, previously scheduled for late 2025, has been pushed back to early 2027. The delay was caused by slow progress on the Starship human landing system and new lunar spacesuits from Axiom Space. The Artemis III lunar landing heavily relies on SpaceX's Starship. As per the mission plan, a depot Starship will launch into low Earth orbit initially, where it will be refueled by multiple Starship tanker spacecraft. Once the depot accumulates sufficient fuel, the lunar Starship will launch and dock with the depot for fuel transfer. After the lunar ship's tank is filled, it will move into a near rectilinear halo orbit around the Moon. There, it will rendezvous with a crewed Orion spacecraft that will be launched from Earth by NASA's Space Launch System rocket. A crew of two astronauts will transfer from Orion to the lunar lander, which will then descend to the lunar surface for a stay of approximately seven days. When their surface expedition is complete, the astronauts will lift off the surface of the moon and head back to Orion, orbiting the moon. After docking, the crew will spend up to five days in orbit, transferring samples between the vehicles and preparing for the return trip. Orion will finally undock from the starship and bring the astronauts back to Earth. According to NASA, the lunar lander's critical design review cannot begin until the propellant transfer demonstration is completed. On December 4, Lakey Esha Hawkins, Deputy Associate Administrator for NASA's Moon to Mars Program Office, discussed the Artemis schedule with a committee from the National Academies. One of her slides noted that SpaceX is moving quickly toward the third Starship launch and that this flight will include a propellant transfer demonstration. As per an FCC filing, Starship's third integrated flight profile will be mostly similar to the first two flight plans. The integrated vehicle will lift off from Starbase, and after stage separation, the booster will return to Earth and land in the Gulf of Mexico. Meanwhile, Starship, after attaining an altitude of 235 kilometers, will perform a powered targeted landing in the Indian Ocean. SpaceX's propellant transfer demonstration, funded by a $53.2 million NASA contract, requires moving 10 metric tons of liquid oxygen between tanks inside the Starship rocket. Even though not explicitly mentioned on the NASA website, it appears that liquid oxygen will be transferred between the main tank and the header tank while the Starship is coasting in orbit. Header tanks store propellant required for landing maneuvers. 
SpaceX needs to make the necessary modifications to the Starship design to allow propellant transfer between the tanks. They need to install additional pipes and valves to connect the oxygen header tank downcomer to the main tank for propellant transfer. However, a NASA spokesperson has shared with the media that the tank-to-tank -tank test is only a possibility and could be pushed to a later flight. After the tank-to-tank -tank demonstration, SpaceX will attempt a ship-to-ship -ship propellant transfer between two starships connected in low Earth orbit. These demonstration missions will give NASA and SpaceX enough data to improve propellant transfer technology and decrease the risks during Artemis missions. As per current developments, it looks like Starship 28 and Super Heavy Booster 10 will be launched next. Ship 28, with all its engines installed, is inside the high bay and is getting ready for static fire tests. Equipment for lifting the Starship onto the suborbital launch pad arrived at the launch site early Tuesday morning. It won't be long before Ship 28 is brought out to the launch site and placed on the test stand for static firing. Road closures for Starship testing have been posted on the Cameron County website, most likely for Ship 28 static fire tests. The ship is likely to be transported to the launch site by Friday evening, and static fire tests may begin as early as Monday. Booster 10, inside the Mega Bay, received its hot stage ring last Monday morning. The ring design is similar to the one that flew atop Booster 9 during the November launch. On Tuesday morning, we saw a new and upgraded booster transport stand heading into the Mega Bay. This stand has been under construction along with another one at the production site for the past few months. At first, it was believed that the rings, which included 20 booster hold-down clamps, were mini versions of the orbital launch mount, and they would eventually be converted into test stands for booster static fires. Later, it was revealed that they were actually new and improved booster transport stands. After the transport stand arrived inside the Mega Bay, Booster 10 was lifted from its engine installation stand and placed on it. The booster then left the Mega Bay and moved into the rocket garden. Once the repairs are complete and the orbital launch mount is ready, Booster 10 will be moved to the launch site for static fire testing. A stainless steel ring section, with pins on its exterior, was spotted at the production site lately. It looks like this is a test article to validate the design of the new and smaller thermal protection system tiles with attachment pins. On Starships, heat tiles are attached to the exterior using strong adhesive. The first two integrated flight tests proved that the glue is not strong enough to withstand the vibrations and keep the tiles in place during Starship launches. Tiles attached to the seams of the ship were the ones that mostly fell off during the launch. Therefore, it is highly likely that instead of glue, SpaceX will use pins to secure tiles in regions of the ship that are vulnerable to damage. The pins and the tiles must be strong enough to withstand vibrations during launches and must be able to handle extreme temperatures during atmospheric re-entry. Now, let's discuss some of the latest updates from the world of science and technology. The Indian Space Agency, ISRO, announced on December 4 that they have successfully brought Chandrayaan 3's propulsion module back into Earth's orbit from a low lunar orbit. India's Chandrayaan-3 mission successfully touched down on the Moon on August 23, delivering the Vikram lander and Pragyan rover to the lunar surface. In doing so, India became the fourth country to achieve a soft landing on the Moon. The lander and the rover spent two weeks gathering data and images, after which they were put into sleep mode at lunar nightfall and never woke up again. The primary task of the 2,145-kilogram propulsion module was to deliver the Chandrayaan-3 spacecraft into a low lunar orbit, 100 kilometers above the surface of the Moon. After completing its task in August, the propulsion module went into a 150-kilometer orbit around the Moon. There, the module operated an instrument called Spectropolarimetry of Habitable Planet Earth, or SHAPE, designed to study spectropolarimetric signatures of Earth in the near-infrared wavelength. The experiment aims to set a benchmark for what to expect from the atmospheric signatures of exoplanets that may be capable of supporting life. After a month of science investigations, Chandrayaan-3 mission operators found that the propulsion module still had a reserve of more than 100 kilograms of propellant, raising the possibility of additional maneuvers. So, ISRO engineers decided to demonstrate the capability of their spacecraft to return to Earth's orbit. On October 9, the propulsion module raised its lunar orbit from 150 km to 5,112 km, and four days later, the module performed a trans-Earth injection maneuver and eventually exited lunar orbit on November 10. On November 22, the spacecraft entered a high orbit around the Earth, making its first perigee at an altitude of 154,000 km. Over time, the orbit will vary, reaching a minimum perigee of 115,000 km. Such a high orbit will not threaten any operational satellites around Earth, and it is also an ideal orbit from which the shape payload can continue its observations of Earth's atmosphere. 
The return of the propulsion module to Earth orbit is a demonstration of the technologies needed for lunar sample return on future missions. India has not disclosed its future plans for the moon beyond the Lunar Polar Exploration Mission, a joint operation with the Japanese Space Agency. That mission is planned to send a lunar lander and rover to the moon's south pole no earlier than 2026. China launched a new internet technology experiment satellite on Tuesday, December 5, atop a Jialong-3 launch vehicle from a mobile sea platform. China plans to establish a massive constellation of satellites called Guoang, which seeks to transform the global provision of satellite internet. This constellation of nearly 13,000 satellites is expected to compete directly with other similar projects, including SpaceX's Starlink. The China Academy of Space Technology and the Innovation Academy for Microsatellites are the two entities contracted to manufacture satellites for Guoang. The launch on Tuesday was China's third attempt at launching satellite prototypes for the mega constellation this year. The launch was declared a success around two hours after liftoff, and the satellite was placed into a low Earth orbit with an 86-degree inclination toward the equator. The rocket that carried the satellite, Jialong-3, also known as Smart Dragon-3, is a solid-fuel four-stage rocket manufactured by the China Academy of Launch Vehicle Technology, a major state-owned space launch vehicle manufacturer. The launch vehicle can carry 1,500 kilograms of payload into a 500-kilometer sun-synchronous orbit. The latest launch came just under a year after the first in December last year, also from a mobile sea platform. Thank you for tuning in for the latest science news and Starship updates. If you enjoyed this video, please hit the like button, leave a comment, and share it with your friends. Also, don't forget to subscribe to the channel and turn on notifications so you never miss an episode.